Ahead on ACC Live Trending, Roll Tide. Alabama claims its third title in four years. Our Riley Skinner is here, and he had, we get his reaction. And with the college football season over, we want to know what will you miss from 2012, and what are you looking forward to in 2013? And both the Blue Devils men's and women's basketball teams remain unbeaten. So who will be the first to lose? All this and more on ACC Live Trending now. This is ACC Live Trending. Every Tuesday, we get you zeroed in on the stories that are trending about the ACC. I'm Jeff Michelle. Look who's back. Riley Skinner's been away for a few back weeks. At home. It's been way too long since I've been up here <laughs> since with you. It's the ACC Jeff. title game. The big story, of course. Actually, what's the bigger story? Alabama crushing Notre Dame or everyone going crazy <laughs> over AJ McCarron's girlfriend? If, if I'm judging by what was in my inbox this morning, uh, I'm going to go with AJ McCarron's girlfriend. <laughs> but, uh, but as a football fan, absolutely, the Alabama dominating win over Notre Dame. We'll talk about that and AJ McCarron's girlfriend. <laughs> what do you think? Which one was the bigger story, the game or the girlfriend? Tweet us at the ACCDN. Her name, by the way, Catherine Webb, a lovely young lady. Sure, nobody Alabama. knows that now. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Kelly Nash is here as well every Tuesday. Kelly, the internet, I think it nearly exploded. It really did. <laughs> Football, of course, now has Catherine Webb, but baseball still has Kate Upton. Of course, she's dating Justin Verlander. Well, she was at the game last night and sent out her most intelligent tweet. Yeah, guys, she tweeted, it's okay, Notre Dame. This happened to the Jets every week. A, a little dig, dig on, on New York Jets. Jets. A big dig at Mark Sanchez. And you're a Jags fan. You're thinking the same I, thing. I, was, I saw that tweet last night. I just wanted to retweet but replace Jets with yeah. Jaguars. <laughs> I yeah. feel the exact same way. Like I said, we need you. Follow the hashtag ACC Live. Our Twitter feed is at the ACCDN. He's at Riley underscore Skinner. Of course, Kelly's K Nash Sports. I'm at Jeff Michelle. Find us. Tweet us. This is what we're going to be doing every Tuesday here on ACC Live. Yes, it's sports, but also talking about what everyone else is talking about online. Monday through Friday, we go through it. Monday, we break down all the games, the important moments. J.R. Reed gives us power rankings. Get involved on Tuesdays. Tweet us. Tell us what you think about last night's game. Every Wednesday, it's ACC Live Access. We talk to the most important players and coaches, past and present, in the conference. Throwback Thursdays, we show you how the headlines today fit into the long tradition of greatness in the ACC. Then Fridays, tip off, a look ahead to the big weekend game. Now let's do the buzz. That's what's happening right now. Bama gets its third title in four years. Nick Saban banned ESPN the couple nights <laughs> leading up to the game. Did Jim Grove have any rules in the bowl games? The only rule really we had, we were down in the Orange Bowl. Everybody looking forward to riding the jet skis. We had free jet ski rides all week. He banned the jet skis from every player. That was the only rule we could. Back to McCarran's <laughs> girlfriend. She added a... 100,000 Twitter followers just last night, including LeBron James. When McCarron found out for after the game, he was totally excited. <laughs> yeah, fired up was, up I guess she's James more followed. famous than I am. I think she <laughs> is this after point, last I think night. She is. And by the way, you also saw a new Harris poll. College football, the third most popular sport in the U.S., behind pro football and baseball, auto racing, and college hoops, the NBA, all behind. All right, Riley, you were watching the game last night. We saw what happened. How quickly did you realize Notre Dame had no shot? I wish I could say after the first drive, but that, that wasn't it. It was really after Notre Dame got stalled its first drive. They had Tyler Eifert went up for that ball, and they called him out of bounds, which I thought was a catch. I think the momentum changed when Alabama took it right down the field flawlessly, put in the end zone, went up 14-0. You could just, I mean, feel the deflation in the stadium for the Notre Dame team and fans, and it just never stopped from there. I mean, it was complete dominant performance on every side of the football. So what would have been a better matchup? I honestly think Oregon. I mean, you, you look at who gave Alabama the most trouble all year. It was Texas A&M. They don't run between the tackles. They spread you out. They have big play capability. That's what Oregon does. Notre Dame had two similar style of football to Alabama, and when you put them up man-to-man -man in the trenches, Alabama's going to win that matchup all day long. And I just think I would have liked to see Oregon in there. Just a whole different style of football. Kelly, what yeah. do you think? Anyone else could have hung with the, uh, the Tide last night? Well, Riley, obviously it would have been Notre Dame-Ohio State if Ohio yeah. State was eligible. That would have been a what very good game, matchup? I think. I like that matchup, too, because they do a lot. Of, they got a lot of wrinkles in their offense, not just line up in the I-4 main to run between the tackles. What about Florida State or Clemson? you see either of them being able to hang with Alabama right now? Clemson's offense, maybe. I like Florida State. I think that would have been a better game just because they have the big play capability on the offense. E.J. Manuel can throw the ball down the field, and they take the shots, but – it comes down to it. their defense could withstand Alabama a little more than Clemson's defense. This isn't just a story about the Tide. I mean, it's seven years in a row now for the SEC. Is it really that much better than the other conferences? 
Right now, yes. I mean, I, mean, I, look at I, that, I hate right? to say that the numbers don't lie, and every time you think somebody's going to creep up and trump the SEC in the national title game, they show up to play on the biggest stage and the biggest moments and prove their dominance. Right now, they are the best conference. A couple fans tweeting us and reminding us, at Hokie3Fan3 and Sammy Eads, Virginia Tech takes on Alabama to start the season in Chick-fil-A Classic, so Hokies better be ready for the Tide to start next season. They've had, oh man, they had some defensive woes this year that they better get a test. Correct. When quick. Logan Thomas looks at that, what does he do? Uh, he's thinking about going to the NFL. He leaves right? early. That's the decision <laughs> the next week. Kelly, when people are, weren't tweeting about McCarron's girlfriend, what were they talking about That's about right. the game well, last night? I have the funniest tweet, guys, that you have never read. Jenny Johnson. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's a comedian. She's hilarious. She took it to Rudy. Rudy just tore up his acceptance letter to Notre Dame and enrolled at the University of Phoenix online school. Yes, yeah, she went there. Now, Miles Drayton, Tar Heels fan, of course. Okay, bring out those Tar Heels. They will give Alabama a game. One word for you. Geo. Oh, wishful thinking. From yeah, the you, need, you need like 22 Geos to, <laughs> yeah. uh, to keep you in the game. And the defensive Alabama. front seven. Yeah, and that too. <laughs> All right, Kelly, thanks. So we asked you, what are you going to miss about the college football season? Before we get to your tweets, let's start with Riley. What are you going to miss? Uh, well, there's two things. Number one, I'm gonna, we just talked about Gio Bernard. He was the most electrifying player in the ACC, and he's leaving early. I loved waking up every Saturday and waiting to watch what he's going to do with the football in his hands. And on the other side of the ball, I'm going to look at Florida State and the defenders that they're losing. They're leaving early for the draft. Bjorn Warner, Brandon Thompson, we didn't even get to see this year at defensive end, and Xavier Rhodes. They were both, and they all three, I think, were probably the top three, top five defensive players in the conference. They're all gone. Okay, so here's what fans are tweeting to us. Land of Gore says, I won't miss it, but SEC fans will miss being able to brag about their team and conference. The SEC fans are proud and they're a they're, proud crew right now, are, seven years and running. They deserve to be proud. <laughs> you're, uh, LL Cool Matt. Were you ever LL cool, cool Riley as your I Twitter handle? Not, not cool <laughs> LL Cool Matt says, he'll miss Duke Johnson making people look like fools. And Duke does that a lot after yeah, a fantastic does. freshman year. J Rock NCSU tweeted, he'll miss, we're back to it, huh? AJ McCarron's girlfriend. Can't get away from it. Catherine her. Webb, by the way, is number two Google trend right now. Number one is AJ McCarron. You have to think a lot of that is because of her as well. <laughs> All right, obviously Alabama is number one in the final AP poll. Where did Florida State end up? How about Clemson? Here's what's happening in the ACC now. The Florida State Seminoles, they're number 10, and the Clemson Tigers number 11 in the final Associated Press poll. After Notre Dame's blowout loss, the Fighting Irish fell to fourth. Oregon is number two. Ohio State is number three. Remember, they went undefeated, but Buckeyes were ineligible for a bowl game. Let's move on to college hoops. The Duke Blue Devils, they're number one in the country in the new AP basketball poll. It is the fourth straight week the Blue Devils are on top. They're just one of four undefeated teams. You know Arizona and Michigan are in the top ten. Don't forget about Wyoming, also undefeated. Duke is at home tonight against Clemson. Ryan Kelly, of course, the ACC Player of the Week. Maryland soccer star Patrick Mullins has been named Soccer America's Player of the Year. Mullins, 17 goals and 10 assists this past season, helped lead the Terps to soccer's Final Four. He could have gone pro. He's certainly ready for the MLS, but decided to return for his senior season. So the Terps in line to have a great year again in 2013. Reports are future ACC member Syracuse will promote defensive coordinator Scott Schaefer to head coach. Doug Marone left to become the new head coach with the Buffalo Bills. The Q's, of course, joins the ACC this summer along with Pittsburgh. So there will be 14 teams in the ACC this year. All right, Riley, we're talking about the final rankings. Did you agree with the AP rankings where they had Clemson and Florida State? I, I, think, I think they got them pretty accurate here. The only thing I think Clemson might have been able to jump Florida State just because the win they had against LSU and the Chick-fil-A ball. They beat such a higher caliber team than Florida State did. And Florida State took care of business, but it wasn't a convincing performance. But I think the way that they beat LSU in a neutral site, Clemson should have jumped Florida State. It was an impressive win. I got a huge audience, too. People all over the country were watching that game. Here's what's on tap the rest of the week on ACC Live, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Tomorrow, my one-on-one -on -one interview with Coach K. He talks about what's making this team so special. Throwback Thursday. Mason Plumlee's been one of the best players in the country. Who's the best Duke player ever? We look at the candidates. You tell us who's number one. And Friday, it's tip-off. Mike Jaminski will be here to preview all of this weekend's upcoming games. Ahead on ACC Live Trending, Duke men's and women's hoops programs, they remain unbeaten, so it begs the question, which one will lose first? We'll have your answers coming up. can't keep greatness in a box, so we won't. The ACC mobile app presented by Outback Steakhouse.
Imagine seeing this on this. That's greatness. For the ACC schools you live for, it's the app you can't live without. Available on your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Nokia Lumia Windows phone. The ACC mobile app. Live games, video, scores, stats, news, and greatness. Search ACC Sports on your mobile device. Out with the old and in with the delicious. Commit to bold taste with the new flavor resolutions menu at Ruby Tuesday. Ten entrees starting at $9.99. Try our savory barbecue brushed ribs and bacon wrapped shrimp. Or take it up a notch by adding coconut crusted shrimp to our mango salsa topped Caribbean chicken. Plus, enjoy our endless garden bar. Free with any chef inspired entree. Ruby Tuesday. It's all good here. Start the new year with savings. Visit rubytuesday.com today for a $5 coupon. The ACC Digital Network, the ultimate video destination for ACC fans. Exclusive highlights, live streaming games and original live programming, unique access to the student athletes of our time and the legendary voices of all time. Defining moments, personal stories, incredible analysis from authentic ACC sources, cutting edge content from the leaders in the digital space. The ACC Digital Network, brought to you by Ruby Tuesday. Oh, hello. Hello? Yes, I didn't realize you'd be talking to an actual person. You don't need to press zero. I'm here. Reach a person, not a prompt, whenever you call Chase Sapphire. Tomorrow at noon on ACC Live, my conversation with Mike Krzyzewski. He talks about how the pieces on this year's team fit so well together. He talks about Mason Plumlee's evolution into an All-American and his big concerns about conference realignment. That's tomorrow on ACC Live Access here on the ACC Digital Network YouTube channel. Welcome back to our trending show. It's every Tuesday. I'm Jeff Schell with Riley Skinner. Kelly Nash as well will be back. More football coming up, including a crazed fan who loves her favorite player so much she had to sing about it. We'll show you that coming <laughs> it's good. up. There's only one school's men's and women's basketball teams that are both undefeated. It's Duke. The Blue Devils are good. The men are 14-0, ranked number one in the country. The women. They're 13-0 and ranked fourth in the country. And the women have the current ACC Player of the Week, Chelsea Gray, who just had a triple-double against Boston College, 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. The men have, in my mind, the Player of the Year so far, Mason Plumley. So we asked you to vote on Twitter. Who will lose first, the Duke men or the Duke women? Here are the results. Looks like more of you expect the women to lose first. Of course, they do take on UConn in two weeks. And the women Huskies, we know all about them. Coach K's teams. Get their first conference road test this Saturday at North Carolina State. It's never easy to win ACC games on the road. Our stats guru, John Pence, the editor and creator of SCACCHoops.com, looked at just how hard it is. Each team playing their first conference game this weekend, one thing stood out to me, and that's that while coaches will talk about how difficult it is to win on the road, uh, in fact, the road team won three out of six matchups this weekend. Um, how unusual is that, that, that the ACC won 50% of the conference road openers? Well, since 2006, in fact, ACC teams have won 27% of the time in their conference road opening game. As you'll see here, Boston College has been the most successful, winning four out of their seven matchups since 2006. Duke, Florida State, and Virginia have all won three times over that span. And only Maryland has gone winless, uh, not winning a conference road opener uh, since 2006. Winning a conference road opener is akin to winning a break point in tennis. It gives you a leg up in the standings uh, as, as the season starts. Uh, make sure to check out Clemson, Boston College, Georgia Tech, Virginia, and Duke as they play their conference road opening games this week. Thanks, John. Tonight, number one, Duke hosts Clemson. Then four games tomorrow, BC and Blacksburg. Yellow Jackets visit NC State. J.R. Reed has Maryland three, Florida State five in his power rankings, and he has the Cavs sixth. They go against Wake. I think they should be higher after that win over UNC. By the way, the Tar Heels taking on Miami. Jim Laranega just got his 500th win. The Canes could start the Tar Heels 0-2 in conference play. All right, back to football. Hey, Kelly, fans are already talking about and tweeting about what they want to see in 2013, they are. right? Hurricanes fans, especially despite the impending sanctions, they are fired up about next season. Kelly Stevens tweeted, she's looking forward to the return of the U. Let's see if she gets her wish. Now, Polaris, he has a couple questions, guys. He wants to know 
Who steps up at QB for FSU? Can Duke kick on? And will the ACC as a whole improve after a dismal year? Clint Trickett's the guy at quarterback for Florida State. Yeah, and I think if he he needs to put on a little weight. I think he's got the fundamentals. I think he's got the, the, the brain. He's got the smarts up top to be able to be a good quarterback and manage the team for that Florida State team. He just got to get bigger. At 185 pounds, you can't take shots from defensive linemen for a course of 12 games and stay in there. I'll tell you that from experience. He does know football. <laughs> he does know football. His dad's an assistant at Florida State. And you, Kelly, you had one more, right? Now, if Duke can make it back. Right. Oh, Duke and and make- I think Duke's going to still continue to improve with, with Coach Cutcliffe out there. And, I mean, just with the momentum that that football program is building, the excitement from mm-hmm. the community, fans, the yeah. university, I think it's just – on a, a, a quick climb upwards. And they're investing in the program as well. What Hell else are yes. fans saying? Also, also, of course, Pittsburgh and Syracuse joining the That's con- right. conference this summer. Now King Otto says, I'm looking forward to Syracuse joining. Go Orange. Yep, the Q's and Pitt coming next year. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking for it's not really player specific. I'm looking forward to the new coaches. I think number one that Virginia just got Tom O'Brien mm-hmm. and John Tenuta on its staff under Mike London. I mean that's that is a that is a whole heap of great coaches yeah, in one yeah, it staff. Really is. Uh, but also the new head coaches with Steve Adagio and Dave Dorn go to NC State and to uh, Boston, Boston College. College. I'm excited to see what they do to those programs to change them around. Well, I want to see what happens to Johnny Football. He wins the Heisman as a freshman. Texas A&M fans are in love. In fact, they love him so much they're singing to him. Johnny Football, now we love him. He's got something that he can resist And he doesn't even know impossible exists well, that was just beautiful. <laughs> uh, Creepy. He's more like it. Wow. Did you ever get any nice weight to it, too, while she was, was singing? She was getting into it. Johnny Angel, Johnny Football. No one ever sang to you, huh? No one ever sang to You were before the, really the I big age of YouTube. That is true. <laughs> you I just got, got yelled, yelled at. at. That was my version of singing. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching. K Nash Sports, Riley underscore Skinner. I'm Jeff Michelle. Follow us on Twitter at the ACCDN. The hashtag is ACC Live. And tomorrow here on ACC Live, I sit down and talk with Coach K. Thanks for watching.